Welcome to another video. I'm going to make a quick move into calculus three or what you call multivariable calculus. And I think I did some video at some point, um, but I didn't continue. So occasionally I might just take up some of the easier parts of calculus three, which even a pre-calculus student can understand just to baptize you um, into the whole multivariable calculus scene. And here we go with this question. In fact, after finding the center and the radius of this sphere, we will sketch it. And I want to show you a good strategy for sketching 3D um, in Calculus 3. Here we have the equation of the sphere. How do we know it's a sphere? If it was a circle, you'll just have X and Y because a circle is two dimensional. You just have the x-axis and the y-axis. So when you draw a circle, you just have this and this. But if it's a sphere, you'll have to have the third one that pro provides depth, which is uh, the one that comes toward you. And that's why you have to recognize this as most likely the equation of a sphere. It may not be a sphere, but by the time we rewrite it in the standard equation of a sphere, then we'll know oh, it's a sphere and then we can identify what the center is. So, without wasting much time, remember to like this video, share this video, leave a comment in the comment section, and be subscribed if you're not. Let's get into the video. The first thing we need to understand is the general equation of a sphere, the standard equation of a sphere, rather. Okay, so this is actually the general form, but we want to get the standard form, which clearly tells us what the radius is and immediately also tells us what the, um, what's the word, what the center is. So here we go. We have um, standard equation. I'm going to write, what would that be? It simply says x minus h squared plus y minus you have G-H-I-J-K squared plus Z minus L squared is equal to R squared. So our job is just to rewrite this general equation in this form. If you can write it this way, you easily find the center such that, so such that the center is the point H, K, L, and the radius is R. That's it. So, now you already know that all you have to do is complete the squares for each of the components because that's all you need to do. We just need to do completing the squares for each of X, Y, and Z and the components and we're going to come to this point. So, let's quickly do that. What I'm going to do is, in order to complete the squares for x, I'm ha I'll have to put these two together. So I'm going to say that x squared plus 8x, I rearrange, then I go here plus, let's do for y, plus y squared minus 6y. And then we do for z, that's plus z squared plus 2z. Um, then we can move the 17 over. Let's do this one because we're not going to be using this negative 17 at all. So now, how do you complete the squares? I picked the easiest question actually because completing the squares for this is easy. You don't have to do any factoring. We're going to write this as x squared. Remember, completing the squares when the leading coefficient is 1 is just to look at this and divide it by 2. You get 4, then square it. So we're going to have plus 8x. Then if the half of this is 4, if you square it, it gives you 16. So we have written this in a perfect square form. However, we have added 16 to this. We have to go here and add 16. So negative 17 plus 16. So we can balance out everything. Whatever you add here, you have to add to the other side. So we go here. This is going to be plus. If we complete the squares for this, it's going to be y squared. Half of this is negative 3, so it's going to be minus 6y, 
Half of it is negative 3. The square of that is plus 9. So we're adding 9 to this. We have to go here and add 9. Remember, every time you go here, it's always a plus you add. Even if the sign is minus, you can see I'm adding here. I'm also adding. And the last one is going to be plus z squared plus 2z. And half of this is 1. 1 squared is 1, so it's just plus 1. And we add plus 1. Okay, and this is what we have. Clearly, this is a perfect square. It is a perfect square x plus 4. Clearly, this is a perfect square. It is the perfect square y minus 3. Clearly, this is z plus 1 squared. And if we add up all the th terms here, we're going to have, um, it's just 9 because negative 17 plus 17 is 0 plus 9. So it's just 9. So looking at this, it's very, very similar to this. Let's just transform it and make it look like this. So all the signs in the middle have to become a minus. Therefore, we can write this as x minus negative 4 squared plus y. This is already minus 3. We don't need to do anything. This is plus z minus negative 1. Oh, there's a 1 here. What happened? Okay, minus negative 1 squared. And this has to be written as a square. So that's 3 squared. So we can conclude that the center of this is negative 4, 3, and negative 1. And then the radius is 3. That's the answer to this. How would you sketch this? Okay, let's quickly do that. In order to sketch this, um, let's do a 3D here. Let's just do... So, conventionally or by convention, the axis going up is the Z axis. Not everybody uses that, but this is the most common convention. The axis going here is the Y axis, which typically would be the X axis if we were in two dimension. But now we're in 3D, so everything changes. And the third axis is an axis that goes this way, which is the X axis. Okay, so now what you want to do is try to calibrate. Let's do one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Try to be as even as possible. Two, three, four. Okay. And then we have, well, these are the parts I need, so I'm not going to focus on the other parts because of the numbers I have. So here, my x, remember it's x, y, z. So my x is negative 4. This is the positive part. This is the negative part. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4 is here. So I have this here. This point is on top of the center. Okay? The center is somewhere hanging in space. Okay? Now, 3 is for y, 1, 2, 3. So this point is corresponding to that center. I don't know where that is, but we're going to find it soon. And negative 1 for z is right here. So this is what I typically would do. I don't want to mess that up. So what I would do is, this is negative 1. So I just draw dots parallel to that negative 1 line. And then for it's um, 3. So 3 is the positive y. Remember, this is the positive y. This is the negative y. So here, so this part is negative, this part is positive. So I have for y, it's 3. So 1, 2, 3, I'm going to do this. So it looks like I have built a vertical wall and a horizontal surface, right? So what I do first is I'm just going to make it go... Okay, let's just do something like this. Okay, so I'm going to make something like this. So that looks like a wall, a wall here and the floor. And then the x-axis goes this way. The x-axis tells me it is negative 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4, somewhere. So let me assume it's right here. It's just a picture that I'm trying to paint here. So it's going to be parallel to it, and then it comes down. 
So you notice that right under this, where it says four, you can draw a line to intersect this. And wherever these two meet, you just choose it as your center. Okay, it's just a picture. We're not perfect at doing that. So what I'm gonna look at is, oh, that's what it is. So I'm gonna go here and under this, I'm going to put a dot here because this is supposed to go this way. So I can just assume it's somewhere here. That's where my center is gonna be. Okay, you can also move this. It depends on the angle you're looking at it from. You can, all, in fact, I think it's better to put it here somewhere here and that's my center and then I'm going to draw a sphere of radius 3 just draw a sphere of radius 3 that's what I'm going to do and then I can do something like this that doesn't look like a sphere of radius 3 but that's the picture that's the idea so this is the center and just say that this is the radius any point from the center to touch the, sur the, the surface is the radius okay now that's not the greatest uh, uh, sketch but you have an idea of where to place the point you can't place the point here because that would be incorrect it's supposed to be corresponding to these points and you want to find them here never stop learning those who stop learning have stopped living bye, -bye.